Hello Sandy Moss here again and I've got another whaling tool to show you today. Uh, this is a little bit less common than the usual sort of, of uh, tools to process whales in the 19th century than we usually see. This is an example of what generally is called a blubber spade. And this was used in the 19th century as I said in the 1800s in the whaling industry uh, that was centered in New Bedford, not far from here, uh, and it lasted until the very earliest 20th century. Uh, and spades, as they're called, were used to uh, cut the blubber away from the body of a killed whale. And typically what happened was that after a whale had been harpooned and had been, uh, d had been killed, it was towed to the whale ship by the whale boats which pursued the whales directly and the whale was tethered to the side of the of the larger ship uh, usually with its flukes toward the bow and its head drifting down along the starboard side of the ship and then men got up on a sort of a catwalk which was lowered over top of the whale and they had blubber spades roughly shaped like this but with round rather than flat uh, iron uh, shaft of this one uh, and they had these blubber spades and they had them mounted on long poles and they stood on a framework over top of the whale and cut lines through the blubber transversely across the body of the whale one line starting at the fin and then going about six feet and another line parallel to it then they would cut off the fin of the whale and hook it into what was called a blubber hook and then hoist it with the ship's capstan through a series of cutter of uh, blocks called cutting tackle and uh, hoisted the blubber up. And as they hoisted the blubber up, it tore the blubber away from the flesh side of the skin and the, the men on, these, on this uh, catwalk kind of assisted this by cutting away the tearing part of the blubber as it pulled away. And the whale rotated as this peel was pulled from the, from the whale, it turned around. It was like peeling an orange, really, with a thick piece of blubber five feet wide and six or eight inches thick. Now this wasn't that kind of blubber spade. This is a spade that was used for a different purpose in the whaling days, and we don't see too many of this kind anymore. Uh, this was used to cut baleen out of the mouth of right whales and later bowhead whales. And this is a piece of baleen that was uh, arrayed with many, many sheets of these baleen plates side by side by side, and it was used by the whale to filter out its food from the water. But this was valuable in the whaling days because it was made into all sorts of uh, objects, principally things like girdles and corset stays and all sorts of things to support women's clothing as well as men's shirt tab and it was even plain to make uh, little curlicues to stuff upholstery with. But this baleen was embedded into the roof of the whale's mouth and it had a real bony cap to it. And you had maybe 400 of these sheets on one side and so the whalers had to cut through that, that juncture where the baleen was attached to the upper jaw of the whale. It was kind of, kind of quite stuff, thick stuff. And that's where this, this spade came into being. Uh, it's called a, a bone spade because this material was known by the whalemen as whale bone. It's not bone, it's keratin like our hair or fingernails, but they called it bone. And this was a bone spade which was used to chop through that juncture between the baleen and the upper jaw of the whale which, as I said, was very, very thick and encased with a lot of calcified sort of tissue. Its distinction is that to be able to stand the, the force of cutting into that, to that bone, really, that, that, uh, of the, the hardened whale bone up here, uh, it couldn't bend. And so they made these bone spades with flat shafts on them. So this is less likely to flex, especially in this direction, than a round shafted uh, typical uh, bumper spade. So 
if you are rumbling around town and you stop in an antique store or an nautical antique store, you just might see regular blubber spades which have round shafts. But if you see one with a flat shaft, you're looking at a bone spade, a very more specialized kind of, of a whale spade, and uh, it's considerably rarer and therefore probably more expensive. So we have a bone spade.